<laughs> maybe I'll kick off, really, and I, I'd just like to, before we get into maybe talking about why we just say some things about... Um, Bruce and I have some similarities, and I, I'll just tell you a few. Um, <laughs> no, I, not hemorrhoids. That's it, no more. No. No, you're not talking about hemorrhoids, are you? <laughs> no, 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 okay. no hemorrhoids. Um, we, um, um, I first, uh, I re remember very well um, Bruce's um, show um, um, that was, uh, uh, his earliest work, which is all about pose, and uh, you may recall that Bruce had something called the, the, the Pose Band. What was it the full yeah. title? Silent, silent Rock Band, yeah. Pose yeah. Band, yeah. The, the Pose Band. So we, we have something in common in terms of both having interest in the pose. Um, <laughs> so um, um, I'm, I came there through being, had a very academic training in the 50s, uh, to which when I went to art school, um, we had to spend, you know, five days in the life drawing room, and in the first year that we were um, in the college, we weren't allowed to paint in the life drawing room. You were only allowed to draw, and to um, be enabled to paint in the life drawing room, you had to name all the bones in the body and yep. one third of the muscles. Absolutely right. Yeah. Did you do you have that training? Uh, yes. Yeah. It was very academic training we had. It's fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. I'm glad I did it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I could abandon it. So, so I could abandon it as quickly as possible. That's right. Did you and have? Did you exactly? Have to, you wanted to abandon it as quickly as did, possible, as Bruce can said. I ask, can I ask you a question? Did you have to model Michelangelo's David's nodes, ear, mouth, or eye? No, but you had a copy. Uh, yes, I mean, Greek did you have, sculptures? Yeah. Did you model have to yeah. do that? Yeah, definitely. We made a complete head. Oh. Yeah. That went down like a lead balloon. Huh? Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> or yeah. a plaster balloon or a clay balloon. Yeah. Interesting. No, I, I did, I, we, 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 we weren't allowed to um, see the female form or the or naked female form or naked male form until the second year at Glasgow School of Art when I left. Ah. Couldn't cope with it, all that flesh. And I know. I left for St. Martin's where they painted things metal with pink paint. <laughs> I much, know. much more correct and proper for a young Scottish pet. Well, we, I remember we, um, we, um, I, I went to a very, very small art school in Yeovil in Somerset, and we had the same model, model. she was called Fanny, and um, we desperate, and we said, can we get a male model? And, and finally, we got a male model, and there were only two male models in Yeovil, um, but m interestingly enough, he always did the same thing with his pose. You know, in art schools, they pose in these terrible poses. You never see people sitting no, like, in, like that. You know, you see people in beds and bathrooms and stuff. But um, can you this, got, you want to do one for us? Oh, well, could, uh, no, oh, yeah. I think we're in the poses now. Really. <laughs> pose, so, pose more. But this guy who posed for us, we always knew what he'd do. So he came, you see, and he'd, he'd pose in his pose, and gradually he'd fall asleep. And then we'd be drawing him for about half an hour, three quarters, and he started to get an erection. And as soon as he got an erection, he woke up. <laughs> so surprised we, himself. Didn't yes, <laughs> yeah. He loved himself. Did, yeah. Was he was he completely naked? Oh yeah, well, you had jock straps, right? Yeah, we had one called Jimmy, oh. a male model in Glasgow called Jimmy. He used to stand with a pose, a pole, <laughs> posing with a, with a with a piece of cloth in front of the. <laughs> And all the men in the class, because he was slightly... Anyway, he used to do a lot of things to cause this thing to occur. And then, of course, then he would have to, have to say, Oh, I'm, I'm indisposed, Mr. Thompson, may I leave the stage? <laughs> and then went and hid in the cupboard and threw a bucket of water on his own. Yeah. It was terrible. Poor. And I caught him kissing Russ Conway in the state bar at Glasgow. Oh, really? I told my mom, and she said, Don't be so stupid, you shouldn't be in the state bar at the age of 16. But then he was kissing Russ Conway <laughs> in the corner of the bar. Jimmy. Jimmy. I can't remember my, our, our guy, Roman. Look, I, I want to bring another <laughs> thing that we had in common, too. Um, that we both broke away from what we were doing. Yeah. Um, and we, I don't know about you, but I got into a lot of trouble because I was pop art and I was a painter. 
And a and pop I, artist. Yeah, I was a pop a toothpa- artist. A toothpaste. Toothpaste and Coca-Cola. Yeah. yeah. No, Fantastic. So, I, I, you know, I stopped, I stopped making pop paintings and I tried other things and I stopped making films. And it was, I mean, it, it's extraordinary to think that we got a lot of, you know, trouble from that, you know. What well, are you doing? You're a painter. No, but I, can I just say, I, yeah. I remember being at, uh, teaching in an art school and people said, Terry Bosch is making films and he's making books. What's he doing? Yeah. There was this complete outrage that yeah. you should not be making paintings. And but, I thought, well, why you can't did he... the same. Yeah, you but why can't same. he do what he bloody well likes? That's right. But I mean, now... he's, he's in charge of his own destiny. And I, I just thought it was, it was really art school cloud, that gr- grim art school... <laughs> Yeah. But saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. And yet it's almost as bad as yellow and green should never be seen except with... Yeah. ..in between, <laughs> you know. And Rome's the home of the dome and Titian was a Venetian and all that crap. <laughs> oh, I love that. And, it. you know, I, 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 was, I thought, good for you. I thought, no, I, I, I thought that. I thought, and then you did that show which I was in, which was interesting. But I did the same. I, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. That's right. What you feel you have to do. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, I, and it's the Might same be wrong, now. Career-wise. No, but there's also expectations, right? I mean, uh, you know, I did this BBC documentary recently and um, the, uh, the director said to me, well, uh, what are you going to do next on this? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. You know, I mean, whatever's necessary. I, yeah. I mean, there's no formula. I mean, every different sort of thing that you do has a different... I mean, in teaching... Um, you come across as five painting, uh, five questions that's always asked, you know, or five or six. And one of them is, uh, like, people, c- students would come and say, you know, Derek, um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got this idea to make Ooh. this artwork, but Ooh. I don't know what medium to use. And I said to them, look, it may sound stupid, but you, need, you use the medium that best suits the idea, you know? Don't make a paint of it if it makes a better documentary film. So. Yeah. But do you come across that teaching yeah. stuff? Yeah, I don't like people who tell me I've got an idea. That makes me feel very nervous. I'm very nervous of ideas. <laughs> but it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, it, it, I think that the thing is that what a lot of people don't get, and certainly about me and probably about you as well, is that I'm, I've never ever been interested in a career. No, if it's interesting, right. a career it implies a strategy and thinking, move here, move there, a bit of this there, and yeah. then... Uh, 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 uh. Never done that. Just, I've always done what I wanted to do, more or less. Yeah, exactly. I've had same. to be a bit pragmatic from here to after work and do various jobs to make money in order to do that. And I did actually teach for a long time in order to, yeah. to, to, to yeah, keep body and soul together. Me too. But, um, I, but I do remember when you, you started making things which were not toothpaste paintings, or, you know, the, the, it was a terrible outcry. Uh-huh. Uh, and certainly within art schools, and with, and by people who you th- would have thought better off, really. Oh. I even had someone come to me at a party and said, traitor. Traitor? <laughs> I mean, you give up painting and you yeah, become a traitor? traitor? Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. No. I, I, I want to tell one... Um, teaching story, because I bet you've got some, one or two. But I, when I was teaching in Houston, um, we had a student, um, she was called Doris. And Doris, uh, it could have been David, but it was Doris. And the p- point about Doris is that she, every time any tutor said anything to her, she'd always say, oh, God, oh, thank you. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, yes, thank you so much. And uh, that was fine. But the other thing about Doris, and she said it to all the tutors, she never, ever did anything you, you suggested. So that was fine. That's good. She was independent. That, that's fine. So at the beginning of a semester in the faculty room, when we were all given a list of who our students were going to be for that semester, um, you'd hear one faculty member say, oh, no. And everyone would say, you got Doris? <laughs> she said, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, what, her, I had Doris at uh, the beginning of the, when she came, and I had her on a last semester in her last year. And she came up to me and she said, um, you know, she said, um, I've, I've got to tell you, Derek, I'm going to have such a good semester. I just got it. everything I've learned in the. L-. She said everything I've learned in the last three days is coming. Uh, three years has come together. I'm gonna. 
I said, oh, let, well, let's talk about it. What, what, what's your problem? She said, well, I don't know what to paint. And I said, well, that is a problem. <laughs> so um, let's, let's talk about it. I said, you know, sometimes I say, if you can't sleep at night, four o'clock, get up, make a list of things. You know, you can't stop the th uh, Third World War. You can't, start your, uh, you can't stop your Uncle Jack and your Auntie May coming. And she said, no, no. She said, I'm, I'm just down to two things. Oh, we can talk. I mean, t what are the two things? And she said, well, she said, I can't decide whether I want to paint geometric shapes or men with erections. <laughs> that, was a, that was a choice. So it's, it's strange. I, to <laughs> I told my dealer, I told my dealer in uh, Texas that, and she said, and I told her she'll never do it, and my dealer said, you do it. So I did. I did a series of drawings from geometric shapes to yeah, it's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's not very really Scottish at all. But, <laughs> but do you what? you have? I mean, you learn a lot from teaching. I did, you know. I think that I, I, I was I'm interested, I was interested in the fact that if you do teach, people said, "Oh, a lot of, you get a lot of stick from other artists because you do teach as well, because yeah, right. you're not a real artist if you teach." <laughs> But so. it has to be noted that, of course, people like Gerhard Richter and Sigma Polka and all these guys and, uh, are all professors yeah. and are all teaching until they're quite old. Maybe not every day of the week, but they certainly were in the building and they did teach. And in England, it's, oh, no, no, you're, you've got to be a serious, you're not a serious artist if you teach. Absolutely. And that's another kind of yeah. horror. But I think the thing about the teaching is that every year you get older and the students stay the same. So you, it makes you a bit younger. Yeah. And they're, they're always doing something nutty stuff and interesting things. And, and you get great you, ideas. I get a few ideas, yeah, <laughs> one or two, yeah. <laughs> well, it keeps you from being stuck in the same kind of thing. You know, there's, it's, there's a continuing kind of dialogue, which is great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't regret it for a second. No, not me. <clears throat> but I, I, I do hate this career artist now, this uh, B-A-M-A Ph.D. Uh, uh, yeah. approach to things. And I thought D meant duff. <laughs> It doesn't Scottish, and Duff is, oh, Duff Duff is crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never go for a PHA or a PHA+. Plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The other thing, I, I wanted to get in these similarities here. The other thing is, I don't know if you... Um, I'll, I'll oh, approach I'll put my glasses way. on, would that help? And I'm sure. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> we're Not twins. Much. We're twins. Not much. <laughs> we're twins. <laughs> we're twins. No, the idea is that, uh, as an artist, um, you know, who've had long careers like us. So, um, you know, we get reviews. So, you know, you get bad reviews, and we know all bad reviews are written by assholes, and good reviews <laughs> are written by people with deep insight. But <laughs> the thing that, as an artist, you learn from reviews is when someone can help you, and it, it gives you some information yeah. you, you don't know about yourself. And one of those things, uh, someone, I've, I've only twice been in, um, uh, heard lectures about myself, when the lecture was solely about myself, and I attended, and um, actually it was Guy Brett who said, um, although Derek's a narrative, a figurative narrative, storytelling artist, he's very influenced by abstraction. And I think that's true of Bruce, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an abstract minimalist, uh, actually, but I can't do it. No, I'm the same. I, I love I abstract art, but I would never I've make it. I've done it, but I can't kind of do it. I'm sort of half doing it. I'm doing it around the corner when I'm always <laughs> looking, but I'm doing it, but I'll, I'll do it. Secret, secret studio at the it's back. It's my secret studio, I mean, it's very minimal, <laughs> very abstract works, yeah. You and Marceau Duchamp with a secret studio. It's just quite interesting though, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like what he said. I like Guy Brett, he, oh. I think he's a good man. Pornography is what you do mm. on the side. Pornography is what you can do on the side. Pornographic drawings. I, I haven't managed to do one of those yet. Oh, really? No, I, I had a bit of an attempt last <laughs> week in the studio. I had a dull moment, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pornograph. Um, What's that, Derry? What was that? What does that mean, Derry? <laughs> Put your glasses on. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that's quite interesting then. You think you're, I, I, but do you, do you actually think you're doing what you should be doing? Or are you doing, 
Is there something else you should? Do you think you could be doing that? Do you, could you see yourself as an abstract, uh, totally abstract painter? No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I like I like abstract art. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm, I like all sort of art. Who's your favourite abstract painter? Oh, Who's um, your... Probably Rothko. Rothko. Who I met. Can I tell a Rothko story? Okay. Yeah. There was that Whitechapel show in '64 called the New Generation, and I won a travel bursary. And um, Brian Robertson gave me addresses to see people in New York, and he, he gave me um, Helen Frank and Tala and um, um, uh, Robert Motherwell and uh, Indiana and various people. And um, I went to a party with a lot of artists. And I told them, I said, I've got all these phone numbers, these artists. And they said, who are they? And I said, well, Helen Frank. And, they, and, they said, and I said, well, have you seen them? I said, no. I said, I'm, I'm only just out of art school. They won't want to see me. Look, you're in America now. <laughs> yeah. You phone those fucking people up. So I did. And basically, uh, to cut a very long story short, um, I, knocked on, I was knocking on the door of Helen Frankenthaler and Robert Motherwell's apartment, uh, Brownstone, in New York. And I don't know if you've ever done it, but if you knock on the door and someone opens it, yeah. you, you nearly hit them in the face. And it was Robert Motherwell, and he said, oh, no, 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 no dentist, no, mm, Helen, Helen. So Helen came in and she said, oh, we were going to tell you not to come today, but someone else has got the day wrong, come and meet him. And come into the library, and I went in, and there was Rothko there. And, you know, I immediately recognized his head yeah. and his glasses. And, and I thought, and you know, and we had a, I will also cut a long story short, we had a long conversation about painting and stuff, but what I do remember, he said to me, and this is, you know, right at his height of his fame, he said to me, um, you want to know how to get on in the art world? And I said, oh, yeah, I was like 26, 27, like that. he said, yeah, and he said, Marry a rich woman. <laughs> 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 that, that, was, that, was his, that was his stuff. You should be, so you can't see yourself being the other side. I can. You see, well, I, no, I, I've done it, actually. I'm sure you have. Secretly. I think there's a, going to be a, there's a big mood around for mm. really serious yeah. abstract yeah. art now. Yeah. Instead of all this kind of dumb crap. Yeah. Well, it's all regurgitated, isn't it? I think, there's, I think I'm in the mood for looking at something which I really can't comprehend and can't get a, my hand in a, in a dumb sort of way. I think, yeah, I'm, in for, I'm up for that. Well, I think there's going to be something happening soon that's going to change all that. I mean, there's no, there's no, at the moment, there's a lot of different things going on, which is marvellous, but, you know, it all comes. I mean, I have the same thing with music. I can't... St I can't believe that rap's still going on. There's yeah. still rappers, you know. So kind of, uh, yeah. oh, so boring. I've been there, done that. Fucking boring. <laughs> and, you know, and the same with the art world. Some, you know, it's got to come up. Rap. Know. Yeah, I never quite got into rap. It's kind of 20s thing, isn't it? Cab yeah. Calorie st started yeah. that, yeah. Oh, yeah, I never... Well, it's so misogynistic and violent and stuff. So what are we going to... Not like David Bowie. What are we going to... What about... Um, <laughs> What about, tell me about this painting here. Can I tell you about these first? No. All right, then. Um, <laughs> no, I don't want to... It's got, right, David, it's got David no, Boy's trousers in right. it. I'm not a big fan. This is a conversation. Um, um, this, is, this painting and the one on the stairs are recent um, works um, uh, called Two, T-W-O. And it's a continuing interest that I've had for years and years of years about duality. Um, I, I, way back in the 70s, I did a show called About Duality, and it was about, well, it was about opposites, and I was trying to do that. And I, I, I find that what I'm often doing now in my work is revisiting things that I did early on, not because I want to redo them, because I left them alone. It, mm. I used to think, Oh, I've done that. I won't do another one of those. Done that. But then I am now sort of looking in, in more depth to things. So those, this painting and the one upstairs called um, In Anticipation is um, about um, op direct opposites. And um, um, this um, came about um, actually my, my first sort of glimpse of what 
how I might start this, there was a marvellous picture in a National Geographic of a cheetah. And um, I thought, right, I'll do a cheetah. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do with it within, within the context of this series? And it seemed to me to be in sort of na nature and nurture, you know, the opposite, really, the mathematical um, conclusions uh, of, of, of within life to do with the natural world. And that's simply what it was. Um, no more. Um, sometimes they're not um, that's as often as complex as I want to start with. Um, in this BBC documentary they made, they said, you know, well, how do you start a work? And, mm. I, and I said, well, basically I kind of think about it for ages and ages and until I get roughly an idea and a general sense of mm. what I want to do. And then from there you go to the next stage, which, which is getting enough confidence to do it. You know, you think, well, I think if I do this and that, probably. And then you try it out, and if it doesn't work, get rid of it. And if it does, so it's, it's a question of, um, of uh, I mean, I don't stick to theories or anything. I'm, I'm not interested. What, about, what getting, about your? Yeah, I, I'm kind of slightly got obsessed with um, shadows. Ah. And the fact that they're there and they're not there, I'm obsessed with invisibility and, and things being not there, which is kind of minimal, really, because I don't actually like stuff very much. I, I like looking at things, but I don't like looking at things that I make particularly. But I like what you say, what you say about you do something, then you, don't, you, you, uh, you keep I don't open a sketchbook you made 30 years ago, and you think, oh, why did I not finish that? Why did I not no. develop that? Yeah, and I keep finding that. things like that, and I think I have started. Hundreds of starts, thousands of starts, and no finishes. Yeah, exactly. Very few finishes, but in the confidence thing is quite interesting. How do you get into a state? I, I can ask you something. How do you get into a state of actually where you can do it? I'm, I'm a kind of a la prima painter. Uh, and that's not the paint, by the way. That's or the make of the paint. You know. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Winston Newton. Dulux. <laughs> uh, sort of. I, I quite like listening to kind of really heavy old rock and roll or John Coltrane. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> like that, and that kind of lifts you up in a state, but I can't do it without that. Oh, really? I do the opposite. I listen to classical music now, after being involved with pop music for years. Well, I, yeah, I'm not that... Yeah, I listen to some at home. My wife says, yeah. I can't yeah. stop it, Mike. I can't really be doing it, really. I also listen to novels, novels on tape, so... Yeah, but I know some artists said, "Oh, how could you have anything going on while you work?" Because you know, I can't do it. But I took, you went and lived in America. So my daughter's asked me a, a question about abstract painting, abstract expressionist painting, and modern jazz. Is there any connection? Mm. Have you read a book on this? Yeah, I mean, there's, they say. Have you read a book? No, I haven't. But I, I, I know the theory. Well, I mean, I would imagine <laughs> doing that. <and> <laughs> 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 I would imagine it would work. But yeah. apparently there's no book on the subject. And uh, is it because the American artists were all white and posh yeah. and all the jazz musicians were poor and black? Yeah, right. I don't know. I, don't, yeah. I, I can't find a book on the... Uh, did they, what did they listen to? What did Robert Muller listen to? Opera, I suspect. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What about Rothko? Funeral should... music? I don't know. He committed, he committed suicide, so... Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 anyway, tell me about the painting you wanted to tell me about. That. Oh, no, you. no. Uh, no, go on. Oh, please. OK. All right. <laughs> go, on. Ask. go on, go on. Um, Be a sport. Um, Which one are you talking about? The, the I, so I worked with Bowie on record cover and stuff like that. And then um, about, um, about um, a few weeks before he died, I got an uh, email from him which said, Derek, I want to say how much I love your book. That, that there's, that Thames and Hudson did a coffee table book. And he said, I really love it and, you know, fine. And, and so I thought, well, that's nice. And so I thought, well, I'll reply, but I'll, maybe I'll do a little drawing for him. And I left it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then he died. And I thought, shit, you know, um, let me see. And I thought, well, I, I, I'm yeah. thinking about him a lot. I'll do a painting. So I started this painting in the middle. And um, I didn't know, you know, like we were talking about how you start something. I have a big archive on David, you know, scraps of photographs and paper and stuff that I've worked on. And um, 
I ra I've always liked this, um, um, the costume that was designed for David for his uh, concert in um, Tokyo. So I, 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 um, I thought I'd take that particular one. And then, purely by chance, um, a year ago, I was in London and walking in Soho, Soho Square, and there was construction going on. And it, there was a notice to say, this is the house, the famous house of Teresa Cornelis. And again, to cut story short, if you want to look her up, she was the, I think she was the 18th century David Bowie in terms of her, how she influenced music, fashion, and everything. And it was just coincidence. And um, that's not her, but she had the reputation of dressing up in everyone else's costume. She used to do these huge costume balls and um, uh, um, lavish things, which, you know, even every time she did a ball, they put the red carpet out so everyone could come like today to see the celebrities walking up the red carpet. And um, she's uh, dressed in a, a man's costume there. Um, the other, uh, so I, I was only going to do one painting, and I thought, actually, again, going back to we talk, you know, I, let's, let's take this further, let's do another one, and uh, let's see what I wanted to do. And again, by chance, I came across um, an interview by David that I'd never read before, heard before. And in it, he talks about um, how unhappy he was at school um, and at home. He never, ever got on with his mother most of his life, and his father had an alcohol problem. And at school, um, they tried, they forced him to write right-handed. He was left-handed, so he had just had a general bad time. And then he said, he did, there was one thing that changed his life, and that was reading Jack Kerouac's On the Road. And he said, he, by reading On the Road, he realized that he didn't have to be conventional. So he immediately went out and bought a saxophone and started painting. So this, this is Jack Kerouac in the middle. And of course, different, two different personas of David. You know, again, David personifies what Bruce was in, interested in, in the idea of pose and, and change. So those were those three paintings. Um, I have begun to um, do one thing. This is fairly recent. Um, I was, I'm back painting. These are, these are paintings that I've done in the last two years. But the, in the last um, um, two years, or the, the year and a half, in the last two and a half years, I've been making short movies, um, six, uh, five or six minute movies. And what I'm doing is beginning to put things from my movies into my paintings. Um, the one upstairs called In Anticipation has got a lot of my images from movies in it, and, and vice versa. I'm trying to put my paintings into some of my films. Um, this, for instance, if you have a chance to yeah. see these two films in here, they're five minutes long each. Um, one film, um, um, one of the consistent images that runs through the film is something called b-boy dancing. I don't know if you know what b-boy dancing. B-boy dancing came, b-boy, like the letter B in boy, comes out of break dancing. break dancing where they started yeah. on the B -boy. floor. B-boy. B-boy dancing. And if you see it, it's amazing. But so those are images for my film that are put in the painting. Yeah. Do you do things like that? What do you do? Hmm? You've, you've I just made some dancing films, yeah. Ah, I thought you did. I got very obsessed with the music of Kevin Coyne. Remember Kevin Coyne? No, don't, don't matter, I'm not. Kevin Coyne? Yeah. It means something? I think it's a very interesting. Uh, he, he died in Nuremberg. He didn't want to be, he wanted to be an anti rock star and, yeah. and uh, played a guitar like that. Very big head. Ah. Made this very funny music. <laughs> and it's kind of strange. It, it's kind of. But boarding houses in Eastbourne, and, ah. and did a, 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 a piece called. Somebody sent me this track. I think called I, I want my crown, ah. and I made a piece at the Tate called uh, King for a Day. And I thought, oh, I remember that. So I thought that's the, I'll make a dancing film for I want my crown, and it's, yeah. a, it's the best thing I've ever made. Yeah, yeah. To eight minutes. I remember that. With a gammy leg. 
Well, that was another one. Who had the Gary Lake, another rock star that had a car, I can't remember him. I, um, Ian Jewett. No, but you, you mentioned your thing at the Tate. I, you know, did you see if that? You, if, yeah, I went to it and I thought, I've always remembered that show you did. You must have done it in the early 70s or late 70s. 72. 72, called King for the Day. It was, you had a show at the Tate for one day, right? A righteous Oh. So one day. I wanted to go for a minute, deserve? but they, they insisted it went on for a day. Huh? That's what they thought about you, one f- I day. wanted. I wanted it for a minute, and they said, no, it has to be for a day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why does everything have to be for a month? Oh, or no. six weeks, you know? Yeah. It was a good show, though, wasn't it? I loved it. Yeah, me too. I loved it. I always remember, let me tell you about, you know, so in, I loved it. <laughs> in my, you know, you always remember shows over, you know, 60 years, you think, oh, I remember that Titian and that was fun. Yeah. That was great. But yeah, I always yeah. remember that show you did uh, and the performance you did at the Serpentine. And you went to the Serpentine, it was outside, and you had... Minimal corridor. Minimal corridor. The, the, do, the, do, the doors. Yeah. You had 200, 150, 60, or maybe I've got the name. How many doors were there? Ten. I said, oh. Yeah. Ten? Oh, Ten okay. doors. I just seem Ten to remember enough. so many more. No, but they kept opening and shutting. They? That's right. Well, what's interesting about it is... Um, oh, so the performance uh, the I'm glad you like that, was please. supposed to be, uh, you know, you know, seven o'clock or something. We better, yeah. we better go now. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> it was at seven o'clock, was and everyone got there, and there was a lot of people packed, and you had wood or something, and maybe okay within that sequence, there's only ten, ten doors, so that was fine, and people were sitting there. Seven o'clock came, and. 7.15, 7.20, and people were like, oh, fuck Bruce McLean. Yeah. Yeah, Where was you know, I? I? No, this is the great thing. And I noticed, I looked around, and everyone was going... <laughs> and Bruce came out one of the door, one of the doors. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and it was going like this. And I thought that was so brilliant. It was a good, it was a good piece, it, that. It, it, it was better in Germany, in Dusseldorf, we did, and in Castle. We did it in the street. And we just, uh, just appeared. It wasn't built as a, a it was, wasn't built, it was a sculpture for the street, and we just sort of did it. Oh. People couldn't work out what it was, office people. It was actually an institutional farce sculpture based on um, a situation at an art school, which we went in. It was just a complete rip-off of uh, timekeeping and people spying on one another and taking yeah. people off, basically. Yeah. It worked quite well, though. Yeah. But it was an institutional farce sculpture. Uh, it's, that's a good name. The one and only. Yeah, great. I remember when we were at Royal College, we all had to be in by 11 o'clock. Uh, at in morning. bed? You signed the book. In oh, the morning, you mean? In the morning. Oh, yeah. Late, you had to be. Not at night. Yeah, no, in the morning. I yeah. signed the book. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what, so, so where's it all gone wrong for us, Derek? I know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> where, did, where did it all where, go wrong? Why didn't our painting sell for millions? That's all I want to know. Yeah, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? That would be a bad sign. <laughs> Yeah, I just had a very happy, I mean, I couldn't be more pleased with how I've done, what I've done, I've, I've just made art from, from well, I left school at 16, and the only person to say anything to me was the art master. I went to grammar school, and um, um, I left school at 16, and the only person to say anything to me was the art master, and he said to me, well, Bosch, he said, it's a very bad idea to leave school at 16. What are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to become a butcher. And he said, <laughs> a butcher? He said, why, why are you going to become a butcher? And I said, well, my best friend, Don, who didn't get into grammar school, I'm very, still very friendly with him, and his father runs a butcher shop, and he said, if I wanted a job, he'd give me a job. So I said, OK. So he said, well, have you thought of doing art? And I said, well, what's art? He and, did. He, and he said, it's what you do on Thursday afternoons. I said, oh, I quite like that. And he said, you know, there are things called art schools. And I said, well, what, what is art? And he said, he, was, he set me up for life. Good question. What is yeah. it? <laughs> he said, you know, see those shoes? Someone designed those. It, it didn't disappear. You see that, you know, that light, you know, there's a street light there. Someone designed that. Yeah. This is a magazine. Look, these have got ads in and stuff. And he said, you know, and then there's painting and there's sculpture and there's... And Quite uh, interesting. I got interested. I never thought of it before. Yes, and he well, got a portfolio and I got into art college. 
Somebody told me at school that every single thing in the world that has been made or manufactured had to be drawn. Yeah, I want to, yeah. So the, and I thought, of course, I have to draw a pair of trousers, your shoe, your watch, your specs, yeah. the yeah. light. Yeah. You say, where are all these drawings? And millions and millions of drawings. Yeah. Every single thing yeah. has to be drawn. Yeah. It's the greatest thing. And I, I think that um, it's a, it's, it's, uh, what I'd like to see is a national service brought back, which not, not military national service, nothing to do with that. A national service where you are forced at the age of 17 to go and do one year of drawing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has to do drawing for one year. So it makes them look, makes them see, and observe things and check, yeah. uh, check things out. Well, David Hockney would agree with on that one. Well, yeah. I think it's quite important because yeah. I, I do a lot. I draw all the time. That's the one thing I do do yeah. do. Can you oh, say do do? Me too. Do, can do. you say do do? Well, you can, but you're not to do it here. No, no. Okay. <laughs> So I, um, yeah, it's been very important. Yeah. I, yeah, I draw all the time. So one, uh, whatever I've done, film, uh, sculpture, yeah. every, I've always been drawing. drawing. Is, uh, uh, but we, um, for instance, it comes and goes, right? For instance, um, I would, last time I did, like, the last place I taught was UCLA and uh, universities, California and Los Angeles. And I taught for about five years and I taught drawing there and then I stopped and didn't teach for three years. And I bumped into um, the guy who was head of drawing there, and he said, Derek, he said, oh, I wish you were teaching drawing again. I said, oh, what's that? He said, well, we've handed it over to students to make more decisions about who comes in to teach. And of course, it's, it's, it's whoever's trending at the moment. It doesn't matter. And he said, I said, well, what's wrong with that? He said, well, there's two things wrong with that. A, they can't draw, and B, they can't teach. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he said, the last guy, we, <laughs> we had to stop him. We had to get someone else halfway through because he was a video artist, which is great. I mean, I love video. And he said he came in, and um, on the first day, he said, OK, guys, let's make videos this semester. And he said, no, eight of us here, we're video artists. That's what we do. We come in there to learn to draw to help us make him videos, you know, yeah. we want to draw. So I said, oh, and he, you know, he, he couldn't draw, didn't, they couldn't know about drawing, so they, they sacked him and they got someone else to come in uh, to do it. But um, I totally agree with drawing, it's so immediate. It doesn't have to be the thing that people think it is, it can be all sorts of things, but it's getting your brain and eye and hand working together and actually making you think about things and see things, and actually experience the world in another sort of way. And if it's, you know, it doesn't have to, and it's not art. That's the, it's yeah. no art, it's drawing. Yeah. I, saw, I saw a program about dancing recently in modern dance and television, which I really enjoyed, and it started way we back in America in 1900. And all through the program, Michael Clark was there, and Margaret Fontaine, Mar what do you call her, Maris Cunningham, and all. Yeah. Nobody mentioned art. They, they were talking about modern dance. We were making modern dance, and I thought, this is a start. Yeah. But all people talk about now is my new art. Yeah. Fuck art. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, well. I, I, and I think that's a problem. But drawing would, if, drawing, if people could actually, if everyone could get at it, it would be great. The world, drawing. Not that drawing thing, that you, but, you know, serious stuff. Well, that's what you, uh, what you deal with as professional artists. You deal with people who write about you or people that criticize you. And it's part of the game and it's fine. I, I actually remember my worst reviews that I had. Actually, it was for a show I had here in the, the ICA <laughs> in about 1982. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was a review. Um, I could mention her name. but You I can do. No, I won't. You go on. I know who you're talking it about. It was in yeah, Time Magazine. It, it was Time Out. Oh, Sarah Kent. Sarah Kent. Is she here? <laughs> See, I'm uh, so sorry, Sarah. I can tell you a story, but, Sarah. Uh, you can give me the worst of you. Uh, she Ali, no, she's on the floor now. Um, what, what happened? Um, I had a show at Edward Tota Gallery, and she reviewed it. And the review she... was amazing. It was sort of, uh, it was because I was living in America, and it was, um, Derek Boucher is now, li now living in the, in the uh, country that could start the Third World War. Um, he's living in uh, the abomination that is Texas. Uh, therefore, his paintings are like hamburgers are to Hope Cuisine. Come on, give me a break. But, Sounds like a good review to yeah, me. Yeah, it's good. It's true, too. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So she did, she did an unprecedented thing, which was 
to review me. I mean, Time Out never reviews the same artist twice, but she did it the next week. And I won't tell you that review, but the, I always remember the, the last sentence of, of the second review. He said, Derek, pa Derek Bosch's paintings are so bad that they make Julian Schnabel look like Rembrandt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, okay. she wrote that? Yeah. I love Julian Schnabel, don't you? I, I love him. Yeah. Don't like her. Big fan. <laughs> and you too, and you too, of course. Uh, what were these paintings like, for God's sake? I don't know. Well, they were the boots, the boot. The cowboy, the... Naked, naked cowboys. Yeah. 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 I mean, maybe anyone want to ask us some questions? Is that, well, we could go on, tell some more jokes. <laughs> Anything we, you like us, air, any area you'd like us to talk about, I don't know. Tailoring? Hey. <laughs> Caterers, yeah, where's, where's the caterers? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, what can we talk about, Bruce? No, we can't talk about the swinging 60s. I don't you know. Can't talk about what? I don't know anything about the swinging 60s. <laughs> you do. do you I? were swinging in the swinging 60s. Oh, I know, right? yeah, yeah, I know. I know. What was it like? Oh, I don't know. Do you I go to that remember. bar in Notting Hill Gate with David Hockney? I was so stoned, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> 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 yes, question, good. Both mentioned music and have used reference music in your art. Have you ever made mixtapes for each other, or do you talk about music and what music you like? Have you ever made together? music? Well, have you made music? But yeah, have you made mixtapes for each other or had, I, had I, music I, fan chat I got conversations? An answer, but you got I first. made some music. I made some recordings and stuff. Yeah. What's it Cult, like? I had a band called Cult Collapso, <laughs> and it did. <laughs> it, we went down very badly at the fridge. I think it's in Brixton, that's what I remember. In Brixton? I've got the videos, if you want to have a look at them, I'll send them to you. Yeah, no, you don't want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, ding, dun, dun, ding, dun. It was a bit like American Deutschland Freundschaft, you know that stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah I quite like that. Yeah. We, we, we should attempt to be like that, but of course, it, of, course it, it, of course it wasn't. When was that? Like in, in the 80s then? Uh, oh, God knows, 80s, 90s, 80s. Yeah. Dun, dun, ding, dun, 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 yeah. That sounds better than the, it sounded at the time, actually. I remember I was recording that. Oh. Did you get that? Yeah. Very good, Bruce. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very good. No, I, 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 I um, Derek thought I came from a certain kind of background, which I don't. I come from a background which is sub totally suburban, and I wanted to be a rock and roll singer. I was obsessed with the singer Johnny Ray, who is of mixed sexuality, shall we say. Yeah. And my mother wasn't very keen on me being obsessed with Johnny Ray, but I thought it was quite interesting because... What was his record called? Cry. Cry, yeah. yeah cry. Every, every song was about rain or clouds or cry. It was all wet, you know. <laughs> and he had, he had a deaf age and he sang, and he didn't look that good to me, but he, he was pre Biggie Pop and pre everything. Everyone thought he was a female black singer when he started because he recorded in OKO OK Records. But anyway... I said, I've got a bit, Johnny Ray is fantastic because he, he wasn't really talented, I don't think. He was the biggest hit in the whole world. And I thought, yeah, I could, I could be that. Yeah. It was like a front, it was like a pause. I could, I could, I could be Johnny Ray. And my mom said, no, you can't. You're not, not rough enough. Yeah. Don't come the rough side of town. You've got to be really rough to be a real serious rock and roll singer. You have to sing yourself out of the slums, basically. So I wasn't allowed, so forbidden to be a rock. I, that, I would have probably been a musician, yeah. It, yeah. I would like to have been. Yeah. Or a, or a ballet dancer. You want to mind, one of my films here is, um, okay, shortest version. Uh, there's a, a group of artists who also, in British artists, who also have a band called the Groovy Arts Club Band. And they had this idea, um, they, there were two, I think, two great galleries in the 60s. One was, uh, Kasmin and the other was Robert Fraser. And then um, I showed at Robert Fraser together with Pete Blake and Jan Howarth, Clive Barker, Bridget Riley. And um, they've got together, um, they've got this idea of they're organizing an exhibition of 10 artists who've shown, who showed with Robert Fraser. So apart from the ones I've just mentioned, there's also Jim Dine, and um, um, Oldenburg, yeah, he's he should for there, some reason. Yeah, and maybe he's in it. I don't know. Um, who else? Um, uh, um. Hamilton? No, not Hamilton. Funny enough, 
um, uh, John Chamberlain, Ed Richet. So, so there's going to be an exhibition. Um, venue not decided yet. And um, um, three years ago, when this concept came out, they started working on it. They said, we're also going to make rock and roll songs about each of the artists. Different rock and roll song. Fine. Um, Ed Richet's Ed Richet songs is called I Want to Meet Ed Richet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there are various other. My, mine, which is showing here, if you like to, uh, is called um, An Englishman in L.A., Mr. Bosher. So that was fine. So that's stage two. Well, past another year and a half, year, and they said to me, you know, we, you, would you design the, the record cover? Because we're going to do it in 2018, and it's going to be on vinyl. And mm. so it's back to LPs again. And it's going to be called Robert Fraser's Groovy Arts Club Band. <laughs> so um, that's, that was the final stage. And then what happened was um, recently they approached me and they said, look, Derek, we really like your films. Would you possibly um, make a film about your rock and roll song? And I said, so that's what I've done. That's what that one, of these song, one of these videos are. Um, and um, um, it, it was different from my films. If you look at the other film that's been showing, is in that I usually have complete control of the films. Not, I mean, my sound is as important as the visuals. But in this case, yeah. the rock and roll song was a given, so I had to visualize actually um, that. And that's where the b-boy dancing comes in. Right. And I. I I also work with The Clash. Um, with which? The Clash, Joe Strummer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Joe Strummer was a student of mine when I taught uh, at the Central School of Art in the 70s. And um, Joe Strummer wasn't his real name. Um, and he used to sit in my class um, with a, a, a guitar, a wooden guitar, saying, hey man, hey man, call me Woody, man. I want to be called Woody. And of course, it was Woody Guthrie he was interested in, as was Bob Dylan. They were both great Woody Guthrie fans, the great American folk uh, artist. And um, so that was Joe. And then I got on with well, and I actually was his personal tutor. And um, about five years later, when they, he, he was lead singer of The Clash, I was walking down Oxford Street, and who should be coming towards me but would he? But this time he was all dressed in black with his Doc Martens on and fag and, and, you know, and fans behind him. And um, I went up to him and I said, would he? And he froze and he said, I'm not called Woody now. <laughs> I know, Joe, that was a joke. I said, I'm, I'm a great fan of The Clash. I, I know all your songs and stuff. So um, a bank, a back to teaching anyway, because within a week I had a phone call from another ex-student called Caroline Kuhn, who said to me, oh, uh, you met Joe? And I said, Joe? He just, oh yeah, I met him also. She says, well, he's, I've just been talking to him and he said, um, would, you, would, you, would you be interested in designing the Clash second songbook? To put that into context, MTV didn't come into existence until 1981. So what pop groups did before is they, they did songbooks, you know, a hundred photographs of the, of, the, of the lads or the girls, plus lyrics, plus some chords and stuff. So I designed their second songbook. And um, so I said to Caroline, I said, well, what's my brief? You know, I'm not a graphic designer. I've done graphics, but I'm not, I don't, you know. And they said, oh, Joe, Joe said, um, tell Derek it's uh, 48 pages. He can do what the fuck he likes. <laughs> <laughs> so they sent me the lyrics, and uh, that's what I did, right. funny enough. It was, it was Good brief. Not by it the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what were we talking about? Yeah. Sorry. What? Yeah. You hungry, Bruce? Excuse me? Am I hungry? Hungry. Not particularly. Oh, no. We're going to stop. Yeah. stop. <laughs> we could do a performance. Right. Thank you so much. Good to go. <laughs>